Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to draw diagrams to model the differences in the arrangement of particles between solids, liquids and gases. You should then be able to calculate the density of material. And finally, you should be able to explain the differences in density between different states of matter. Now there are three common states of matter and these are solids, liquids and gases. We're going to start by looking at how the particles are arranged in these three states. Let's start with solids. I'm showing you the arrangement of particles in a solid here. In a solid, the particles are very close together and they're arranged in a regular pattern. Particles in a solid vibrate, but they do not move from place to place. Here's the arrangement of particles in a liquid. In a liquid, the particles are still close together, but they're not arranged in a regular pattern. In fact, the particles in a liquid can move around each other. This shows the arrangement of particles in a gas. You can see that the particles are very far apart and they're not arranged in any pattern. In a gas, the particles are moving very rapidly. Now in the exam, you could be asked to draw the arrangement of particles in solids, liquids and gases. So it's really important that you learn them. OK, we're going to take a look now at density. The density of a material tells us the mass for a given volume. Now that sounds tricky, but the idea is relatively straightforward. I'm showing you here a brick and a polystyrene block. The brick has a high density. It has lots of mass packed into its volume. The polystyrene block has a low density. That's because it's got a lower mass packed into its volume. We can calculate density using this equation. The density equals the mass in kilograms divided by the volume in meters cubed. The unit of density is kilograms per meter cubed. And here's a triangle if you prefer to use these. Now you're not given this equation in the exam, so it's important that you learn it. Here's a question for you to try. A block of wood has a mass of 150 kilograms and a volume of 0.3 meters cubed. Calculate the density. Pause the video and try this yourself. Okay, so the density equals the mass divided by the volume. The mass is 150 kilograms and the volume is 0.3 meters cubed. Putting these into the equation gives us a density of 500 kilograms per meter cubed. Now we can use the particle models that we saw earlier to explain the density of different materials. Solids usually have a very high density. Because the particles are packed closely together, solids have a lot of mass for their volume. Liquids also usually have a high density. Again, because the particles are close together, liquids have a lot of mass for their volume. Now gases have a low density. That's because the particles are very far apart. So gases only have a small mass for their volume. Now there are some exceptions to these rules. For example, polystyrene, which we saw earlier. This is a solid, but it has a low density. That's because it has a very open structure and is full of air spaces. So it has a small mass for its volume. I'm showing you polystyrene under a microscope here, and you can see the air spaces. Remember that you'll find plenty of questions on density in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to draw diagrams to model the differences in the arrangement of particles between solids, liquids and gases. You should then be able to calculate the density of material, and finally you should be able to explain the differences in density between different states of matter.